Plenty of football talk and some other sports as well, next on Sports Bar. Hello and welcome into another edition of Sports Bar. I'm David Jackson, back with the crew again. Good thing to know that I can leave and my lead is still protected in the Monday night. Race. So <laughs> that was good. I'm glad I left that out in the open and uh, ready for everybody to charge back. How'd you guys do? I'm yeah, on the way I'm back. I'm, I'm at yeah. least not in last. You're I will say that. Right. I'm That's moving my right. way up. But, we'll, uh, we'll talk more about uh, NFL football coming up here in a few moments. But uh, first things first, uh, App Football lost for the first time in six games. I dropped a 10 game uh, winning streak in the conference Thursday night against Arkansas State. Uh, getting ready to move on for Idaho, but uh, first your thoughts on uh, what you saw Thursday night. Um, well, they protected really, really well against the run game, not to mention we just struggled a little bit in the run in general, and I think that that's really kind of what killed us in the end was that we just we had to rely really heavily on the pass game that I just don't think was there to carry an entire game. So it was weird seeing Marcus Cox only put up 78 yards over the course of the game. So, I mean, overall they just played a better game than we did. There wasn't a lot to say. Yeah, I don't know. I just it, it was a strange performance by the defense, and in back-to-back -back weeks now, we've seen some. I don't. I don't even know the best way to describe it. Just it. You know that this team is better than that, but they, the defense just has. You know, I wouldn't even say they've left a lot to be desired. They're just not playing up to what we're used to, I mm -hmm. guess, in the in the dominating wins we had in the beginning of the season. Yeah. But Arkansas State is a good team, and I think because of their out of conference losses, um, they came in a little underrated just because of what the record was. I mean, coming in five and three or whatever it was. I mean, you know, you look at their conference record and you think, oh, well, maybe they beat up on some teams, some of the lower teams in the Sun Belt or whatever. But they're they're a very good team, and they yeah. showed that. Yeah, so. I think them playing some of those you know tougher opponents early in the year probably help kind of battle test them. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Freddie Knighton is really one of the most dynamic quarterbacks we've faced all year, Absolutely. maybe outside of Deshaun Watson. Yeah. And I didn't even think Watson had a terrific game against us. Um, <laughs> I don't think we prepared well enough for Knighton's feet. I don't know if we just underestimated what he could do or, um, you know, in the film room didn't necessarily uh, do what was necessary, but he killed us all game long. Mm -hmm. And um, when their offense was struggling uh, earlier, earlier in that game is, you know, when we had those two critical fumbles near the red zone mm -hmm. and just gave them yeah, you know, 14 points, essentially. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, it's really uncharacteristic for us to turn the ball over, yeah. too. I mean, we came in with such a high turnover differential, and, you know, those two fumbles early, that's 14 points and, and right there. And losing the center really yeah. hurts yes, as absolutely. well. I mean, those snaps, we only had, I think, I think two fumbles, um, but could have had many more. Oh, yeah. uh, you had balls that Taylor was trying to pick up, you know, off the ground. Yeah, they're coming at his knees yeah, and his Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's very hard to expect a backup center to come in and yep. deliver the same, you know, you know, quality of play as the starter. Uh, yeah, it just is. Well, and I think that had a lot to do with the defense as well. And what I mean by saying that is that because the offense was off sync uh, mm -hmm. and, and clearly Taylor was never able to have that same synergy with Parker Collins in at center, just uh, mm -hmm. didn't get the snap relationship right, that put the offense into a situation where they weren't as efficient. So they go three and out. Your defense is back on the field. They get scored on. Offense goes three and out. Your defense is back yeah. on the field. There was no period of time for adjustment. And you look back at that, I believe Appalachia went four consecutive three and outs and Arkansas State scored on five of six drives during that standpoint. So yeah. uh, there, there just wasn't the time to be able to, to have a lengthy period of time on the sideline and say, hey, what are we doing about this guy that's running all over the place? And, uh, and certainly Freddie Knighton has been in the conversation for Conference Player of the Year uh, before uh, Appalachian was certainly aware of his skill set. But you're also looking at a team, too, that's now qualified for a bowl for the fifth straight year. Yep. So I think mm -hmm. if everybody's looking for a new team to dislike, I won't use the H word here, but uh, if you <laughs> need a team to dislike, here yeah. is your team because they are going to be, from a competitive standpoint, at least right up there uh, with Appalachian. I, I think, though, like you guys said, though, it came down to turnovers. I mean, you lose the game by 13, gave them 14 points off short scores. So yep. that, yeah, there, exactly. Just right two there. fumbles really loomed, yeah. loomed large. Hate yeah. is reserved for Georgia Southern. Um, <laughs> okay, so you but, uh, bring up a good point. Yeah, uh, but you mentioned bowl games, and um, you know we may not win the conference with this loss. I mean, it would take an well, it would take Arkansas State losing really to a lesser yeah. opponent at this oh, point. Oh yeah, it would take a miracle. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and we would win out. Um, but 
I still think there's a very good opportunity for, for Appalachian to show out in a bowl game. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we don't know, you know, what game we would play in or who we would play. Um, but say we play a team from a peer group of five conference who you know, is considered the upper echelon of that league, I think that game can serve as a, a very important um, game you know, as a measuring stick for the rest of the country for our program. You know, if we can win that game, say, okay, well, you know, they didn't win their conference, but maybe the top end of the Sun Belt Conference is a little better than what we were giving uh, credit for. And also, you know, the money associated with, uh, with the bowl game certainly doesn't hurt, so. Yeah, I, and I think, too, uh, you know, Yes, we lost, but conference games, stuff like this happens. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. it's just when you play in conference like this, the t especially the top teams in the Sun Belt right now, the talent level difference is so small that, I mean, it just takes a team showing up and ready to play. And I think, you know, not to say that I'm not saying in any way the app has gotten full of themselves with all the publicity they've gotten with being ranked so highly, but it's easy to get up in that spot and T t start looking down on any team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Th because, I mean, when you look at the rankings, they're they're up at the top of the Sun Belt in almost every single category. Mm -hmm. It's easy to start thinking, like, we yeah. run this thing. And you know, and I, I'm not speaking for anyone when I say that, but I can see where that type of stuff on a week-in, week-out basis happens. But yeah. I will say, I really did expect after the Troy game, that to be the game that kind of like, okay, somehow we managed to slip mm -hmm. by and still win this game. Yeah. We came away unscathed, and now we'll bounce back. And, and I, was, I was surprised to see the game go the way it did on Thursday. Yeah. And I think for from a bowl perspective, too, you know, you look at the way the Sun Belt is aligned. They've got four games to, to play into right now. There are three bowl eligible teams yep. in the league, and quite honestly, there's going to be a stretch to get a fourth, in, yep. in my opinion. I think uh, Louisiana Lafayette and South Alabama are both uh, best position, but they've got to be hot late, mm -hmm. and both of them have to play Appalachian in that mix. So you don't necessarily know how well they'll, they'll fare there, but this loss didn't really do much to change which bowl or selection of bowls Appalachian would qualify for. I mean, yeah. it, it was always going to be a long shot to get something outside of what the Sun Belt grouping was, uh, but you're still looking at, at pretty regionally, uh, regionally desirable games, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll see how that uh, continues to transpire. But Idaho this week, interesting team, too. They put up a ton of points. They've given up a ton of points yeah. in the last mm -hmm. two weeks, I believe, 107 points scored against them. So you like to think that an offense that can score will get well uh, as long as they don't turn the ball over against the Vandals indoors. Yeah, yeah you way. say yeah. turn the ball over. That's something that Idaho has done a lot this year. Um, their quarterback has thrown 10 picks this season yeah. to his 12 touchdowns. So, you know, that's uh, you don't have that ratio you would like to have from your starting quarterback. Uh, the running back, Penny, has rushed for almost 1,000 yards. He's had a similar season to that of Marcus Cox. Um, and then they have a few uh, wide receivers flirting with, like, the 800-yard mark. Um, so certainly they can air it out, and they can also run the ball. So, like you say, they can score, they can put up plenty of points on you. Um, and I would say that Appalachian's offense will be able to do the same, given uh, that you said you know they're in the dome. Yeah. Uh, but I think our defense will come to play in this game. I think in this game there is a a talent differential, yeah, like absolutely. you were talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, I hope that the guys take advantage of the fact that they are indoors, because I mean this late in the season, especially here, yeah. I mean. Getting you know good weather playing or in Idaho lack could be of a lot weather worse. for the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know that's important to us. I mean they've played several games in pretty horrible conditions up yeah. here. So I think that I think that the guys can kind of take that out of consideration. And say all right now weather's not an issue. Let's move on to all the other things that we need to worry about. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you know this is going to be a game where the defense is going to come out to to kind of make a statement. I think uh, you know back to back weeks you kind of uncharacteristically moved away from what you know, honestly was the big success on this team and the big strength of this team was in that defense in the past two weeks have just kind of been, you know, just away from what they do. And I think they're going to really try to beat up on, on Idaho to kind of say, hey, don't forget that we're still very good. Yeah, you sure. know what I mean? I, I expect uh, guys like Blair and, and John Wall to have big games. One note about a team that we've already mentioned that's still left on our schedule, Lafayette. They barely got a win against Georgia State this week. Yep. Something like 23-21. Yep. They had a special team score. So, you know, you're looking at a game they lose if they don't get points from a, a position group that you don't necessarily expect uh, to get points from. Um, you know, what do we think of them? I mean, they've 
seem like they've fallen a they've long way. Graduated ways. a lot from yeah. last yeah. year, and and they've had some issues with quarterback play from an efficiency standpoint, turning the ball over some, uh, not nearly as stout defensively as they were a year ago. But they graduated some some top talent there as well, and I, I think that's where you see a, a team that's flirting with that bowl eligibility. Yeah. But again, Saturday sure didn't sell you on that. And and Georgia State had an opportunity to put a touchdown on the board late twice yeah. in that game that would have beat them. So uh, the, uh, Lafayette definitely left a lot. To to be desired um, uh, from that perspective. I think going back to Idaho, you know, you're, you're talking about also hitting a team that looked like they were going to make some noise for a bowl, and then now all of a sudden they've got back-to-back -back losses to New Mexico State, who hadn't won a game in two years, yeah. and then you have this uh, this loss to South Alabama. They were up 24 nothing at halftime, mm -hmm. and end up losing that game, almost going away. By the time you you kind of see how South Alabama wrangled control away, so. You know, the, the way the schedule sets up, you've got a chance still at a 10-win season, yep. your second mm -hmm. year into the FBS. I think if at the beginning of the year we're all asked, would you take 10-2? and two? <laughs> I think everybody <laughs> yeah, would yeah, sure, yeah. sign me up yes. right now. Yeah. Um, going into some other uh, storylines from college football, a lot of eyes on Duke and North Carolina this past week. Mm -hmm. One of the top offenses in the country, especially the way they're playing right now in North Carolina. Allegedly one of the top defenses in the country, but you talk about a group that got boat raced. I mean, there was not a receiver that North Carolina had that was covered, it seemed like, at any point in time in this game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, Duke has gone through some unfortunate happenings lately. I mean, this one was a lot more on them, but, you know, coming out of the loss to Miami and then go and play against an opponent that's your rival, I mean, and, and just get blown out like this. I, you know, I, I wouldn't have picked UNC for this game just because, re regardless of their record, I have a hard time believing in. I, I don't know. I just UNC football lately just hasn't been has left a lot to be desired, and yeah, Duke definitely. has kind of been. If out of the two teams, Duke has been the one that's oh, yeah. kind of been on the upswing. Yeah. And uh, but it just seemed to all fall apart for Duke. They just it's, I don't know if their head's not in it or what it is, but. Yeah. And North Carolina now, I mean, to be 8-1 and one and your only loss, it, it makes their loss look that much oh, worse. But, but you can tell yeah. something changed after that game. So good for North Carolina because lately football has not been their thing. Yeah. Well, you know, Marque Marquise Williams for North Carolina is that team. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a guy that had 404 passing yards at the half. Yeah, now, they have plenty of wide game. receivers, uh, big playmakers, but if you have no one that can get them the yeah. ball, then you're, you're kind of out of luck. Yeah. Um, and so I think this is his this is his fifth year. This is his senior year, and uh, he certainly wants to go out with a bang. And that'll be an interesting game if Clemson ends up playing at Carolina yeah. for the ACC championship game. Certainly, Clemson will be the favorite. And, yeah. You know, I mean, it would be it would be a shock <laughs> be a if shock. Clemson lost that game. Yeah. However, I do think North Carolina might have the offense to at least yeah. keep up. Yeah, to make it yeah. a game at least. Yeah. So I, that that might make for a. Uh, you know, a, yeah. a late year, you know, game that might decide something for the, the playoffs. Hey, and part of that is Marquise Williams is from Charlotte, North Carolina, yeah. mm -hmm. would get to go back to the place to avenge the one bad loss they had because exactly. they probably won't get there if they if they don't win out the division with, with uh, Pitt right on their heels too, but they hold a tiebreaker in that scenario. Uh, there are certainly um, some interesting storylines and parallels to pull from that but you know as we uh, kind of focus on Clemson Florida State here uh, that was a Clemson offense that doesn't seem like they are going to be denied I, I thought that for the first time all year they had to be patient and their patience ended up paying off in the end. Uh, it looked like they were ready to tip the scales at any point, but you still have to stick true to the game plan and run the football, and it's hard to do that sometimes when you're down, but they were able to use that running to set up the rest of the ball game and, and a nice win over Florida State. Yeah, yeah I, I just think Clemson is a team of destiny this year. I mean, I, it's a little early to say that, and I think if my dad knew I said that, he'd be very upset because he's pretty superstitious <laughs> about that type of stuff. But at the same time, <laughs> They just, you know, everyone talks about Clemsoning and how that was like a thing. You knew they were going to drop the game. That belongs to Tennessee now. Well, yes, yeah. Definitely. Yes, and we talked about that before. But I think if Clemson was going to Clemson, it would have been versus Florida State. And mm -hmm. I think it shaped up to be that game early on. And, you know, for them to finally pull it out, I think, you know, they've really got that off their back finally. And I, I, any team in the country right now, I mean, Alabama's starting to look hot again and stuff, but Clemson it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any team in the country right now. In my opinion, Clemson's biggest calling card is their defense. Yeah. I mean, when they really want to, they can pin their ears back, and, and they're going to stop you, either with the, the pass rush or, or just, you know, stuffing up the middle. Um, they played beyond my expectations yeah. in the latter part of that game. In the early yeah. part of the game, I was like, yeah, you know, Florida State's giving them uh, some trouble, and, uh, you know, they haven't had success at least recently yeah. with that Florida State squad yeah. and even when maybe they were probably the more talented squad but um, I, I'm happy for Clemson actually uh, I mean I think Clemson doing well reflects well 
on us. Not yeah. that we played Clemson terribly close, but at least we can look to one of our losses and be like, well, you know, we lost to the number one team in the country. Yep. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and help them get that so ranking because their schedule exactly. was number one. And, yeah. and yeah. a big part of that was the fact that at the time, Appalachian was 7-1 and one in helping boost that schedule up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, too. So um, interesting points there. Uh, LSU and Alabama in the SEC was thought to be the mega matchup, but, you know, we talked about this earlier in the year. Everybody kind of starting to discount Alabama after the Ole Miss loss, and that just seemed to fire them up because you could make the argument that they've been toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson since that point. I mean, this is a team that if, if you had a national championship matchup that was Clemson and Alabama, I think you could charge infinite price oh, for absolutely. tickets because oh, yeah. that would be the matchup for the ages right there. You're talking about two teams that are playing really well yeah. right now. Yeah, I think any time that you know LSU kind of came into that game ranked higher, and it's like any time that – you you give Alabama any chance to be not the favored team, they're going to blow you out. I mean, they this is you're also what counting they do. on less miles to do something right. Yeah, absolutely. Too, yes, that's... but at the same time, I mean, I just feel like any, any team put them against yeah. any team that's favored higher than them, and they will they will be more mentally ready for that game, and they'll go in and, and blow out a team because every time something like this happens, you know, every any time they lose, it seems like it's some massive upset. It's never against the teams that you would say, oh, you know, it could be a toss up. They always seem to just blow those teams out. So Alabama is going to be a team that the playoff system favors Alabama really yeah. well. And, uh, I mean, Ohio State was able to get over that last year. But, but I said when they first instituted it, I mean, who knows how many Saban may win because once he's got to get his guys ready to go, they are. Yeah, well, I think the matchup against LSU is a good one for Alabama. Uh, and you might think, well, why would that be? Because, you know, you have a guy like Fournette who's yeah. you know, probably the leading uh, candidate for the Heisman. But... You know, LSU runs a very pro-style I-formation kind of running game, yeah. uh, which I don't even know if you would call it pro-style anymore <laughs> given, you know, the, the change in the league. But yeah. um, the kind of offense LSU runs is the kind of defense that Alabama recruits yeah. for. Um, so you just kind of have big guys on big guys in yeah. those situations. Um, and Alabama always seems to be, I guess, the, the stronger of, the, yeah. of those two yeah. sides in generally those matchups. So. And maybe Derek Henry will actually finally get some recognition after he yeah. like nearly tripled yeah. Fournette's numbers exactly. and, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly put him in a position now where Deshaun Watson's getting a little bit more yeah. run for Heisman because Fournette just kind of fell off the radar in, yeah. the, in that game. All right, so let's talk NFL. you got your got your shiny Colts jersey. I know, here. I do. So not so much about, uh, you know, the last time the show was aired, the Colts hadn't played the Panthers. Yeah. We won't talk about that game. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the <laughs> other, you know. I went to that Col game. It wasn't good. The Colts are a hair away from having knocked off two of the league's unbeaten teams. Now, they obviously didn't get there, but they were close. They were close. That's a pretty I mean, we solid showing out of one to. of the worst divisions in the whole entire league. Yeah, well, I mean, we definitely, we came back when we had to. I mean, I definitely was getting to the point and sitting there in the stands, sopping wet because it rained torrentially the whole yeah. game and just saying, did our team get off the bus? Did they get lost? Did they like take people out of the stands and go, you're the Colts now, go play? Because there was a while there where I felt like, I was like, I don't know who these people are. There, no, nothing was going right. No one was, they weren't running the right routes. They were missing pass. It just was, everything was wrong for such a long period of time. And then it was like, they came into halfway about through the third quarter and all of a sudden we're like, oh, we know how to play football. Never mind. just kidding. Let's do it. And then they hammered back. And I mean, my dad even turned to me and said, like, are you ready to go? And I was like, if they don't score in this drive, we'll go home. Because, like, it, it was miserable. And yeah. then they scored. And then they scored again. And then they scored again. And it was kind of like, okay, we're back in this. We're here. And my poor mom didn't know it would go into overtime. She didn't know that was a thing. So when she found out that we could tie it and then have to stay football. longer, she was kind of like, oh, this is okay. And then, I mean, and we ended up getting to kind of slide down the stands a little bit, get a little yeah. bit better seats. And, I mean, we got to the point where it was us and kind of a group of Colts fans, like, hanging over the seats just watching. Uh, it was the most it's emotional good thing you didn't time. put a banner up. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, I mean, we did what we needed to do in the end to make it a respectable game. And I just appreciated that because, I mean, we played horrendously for the first half and I mean you kind of got to work with what you have and finally luck seemed to get something done and figure out okay I can throw the ball to the correct people and I know what team I'm supposed to be looking at so we got there. It wasn't pretty. I in no way say it was a good game, but but I will, they carried that over yeah, to the Broncos. Yeah, but we used. It. I think that I think they got back into the locker room afterward, and Pagano kind of said, "All right, guys, take this and go with it." And 
we definitely showed up against the Broncos finally. I mean, we definitely stumbled a little bit, you know, going getting up by 14 and then <laughs> letting them score 14 points. And so, I mean, it definitely wasn't, once again, the most beautiful games I've ever seen. I wasn't, like, happy with it, but at this point, we'll take it. <laughs> the, the Panthers' defense necessarily didn't come out to play in that second half of the Colts game. No. And, you know, the same could be said for the second half of this game, Packers, this week, yeah. the Packers game. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, you had Thomas Davis picking that ball off there towards the end, but certainly they were not playing to the same, yeah. you know, intensity that they were in that first half. Uh, you could say that some of that was due you know, to halftime adjustments, which I'm sure in both cases it was. Um, but it, as a Panthers fan, it made me you know, question the defense a little, at least you know, their, their finishing ability against teams that could actually you know, really score the ball when they wanted to. Yeah. Uh, because it's been talked about almost at nauseum how the Panthers hadn't played anyone up until you know, recently. Um, and most of those teams necessarily couldn't score the ball. Yeah, the funny thing is, though, you, you, we heard that, we talk about that all the time, is you know they haven't really played anyone yet. They're playing teams that they were expected to beat and all this stuff. And now that they've got, you know, the Seahawks and not really the Colts, but and the Packers and they not beat really them, the I'm still, <laughs> I'm still looking. There's, the, I'm looking at these games and thinking, I still don't feel like they're as good as what their their record shows. I mean, they're they're playing well and they're playing well when they need to, but. The record shows games that I think, I don't know, it shows a team that I don't think they're quite there yet. I think that there's still improvement to really be the team that I yeah. think they can be. And I think that people are kind of expecting them that they're like, they're the best team in the league. We're so good. It's like, there's still a lot of work to get to what people want to say they are. Yeah, but here's the thing that I'll say is that New England plays probably the ugliest football in football oh, consistently, yeah. <laughs> but they keep winning. And if the and that's what the Panthers have been doing. <laughs> well, that's what the Panthers have been doing is they've, they've been playing relatively ugly football. They're not dominating every team they play, but they're scraping out wins. Yep. And, and come playoff time, I'll take a team that's been able to do that all season than a team who, you know, like, and not to not to Colts bash here, but I'm making no. a good example because Peyton Manning is notorious for just crushing teams mm -hmm. all through the regular season. And then you get in the playoffs and it's like, oh, we've never been in a close game this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you fall apart. And that's why teams like Can't New England yeah. sit there and beat teams like that year in and year yeah. out. And I think the Panthers have done a great job of just figuring out how to win. Yeah. Well, are you the pressure and they're keeping their heads they can yeah. look at the game and say okay this is what we need to do and let's get it done as opposed to let's just throw the ball every single run yeah. and hope that maybe some bomb makes it into the end zone yeah, well, you're eight games in though I, I'll I think that to your point about they've, they've kind of been slipping and sliding their way through some of these games I also think and, and it's the popular take right now but I think there's something to it to see with eight games to go just how much more developed will Devin Funches be by the yeah, time the yeah, playoffs yeah. start? Because it, it's been amazing to me. I, I think defensively you've got a team that's got you know, some real star power. I think Absolutely. Luke Keekley's playing like one of the best defensive players, if not the mm. best defensive player in the league yeah. uh, at the way that he's able to plug the middle. Thomas Davis is having an amazing season considering all his physical ailments, <laughs> and you can go on down the list. But to me, how Cam Newton is scoring points and putting up yeah. nearly 40 yesterday on the Packers with that offensive complement to him. It shouldn't be done, but he's. I think it's made him a better quarterback because he hasn't had that Steve Smith, that that uh, Kelvin Benjamin, where he's going to force the ball to 12 to 15 times a game when they're only open six or seven. You've got to be a little bit more diversified and get a Ted Ginn and get Philly Brown and get Devin Funches and all these other yeah. guys involved to the point where now you can't focus on one guy anymore. Yeah. So now if you get Funches to be somewhat of a primary weapon that you can deal it to six or seven times and complement that with Olsen and complement that with and so on and so on, and then have Jonathan Stewart run for 85 yards a game. That's going to be a tough yeah. offense to stop. You've seen a lot of names that you're not used to seeing. You're, you're hearing a lot of different – you're hearing Ted Ginn a lot more and that kind of thing. And Funch just had a great game, I felt like. I mean, it wasn't – packed with huge numbers or anything, but when, when he got the ball, he did something with it, yeah. and he did what they needed him to Ted do. Ted Ginn so. got draped on about every catch he made. I yeah. mean, That's every catch he made. everybody's taller than he is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but um, I, Carolina, in my opinion, you know, you can only play the games that are on your schedule. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you, so you can't fault them for being in the division they are, and, um, and you want to talk about bad divisions. Yeah, uh, oh, no. You can't fault them We're for, one. for their okay. schedule. And, um, now it'll be, you can't fault them for the conference they're yeah. in. They're in it's, yeah. Yeah. it's not their fault. So. Yeah. But, well, uh, speaking of faults here, I want to blame you guys uh, for not catching up more ground. Uh, we got to bring up the Monday Night Picks here real quick. 
Quick scoreboard update. Yeah, all a little right. bit of separation. So lap, a little, yeah. little lap traffic uh, in the back there, but you guys can catch up. All right, because I'm giving you a golden opportunity. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how are you? All right. Uh, oh, okay. So the uh, the Chargers now. and the Bears. What you got? <sighs> well, I want to catch. I want to make up some ground. Right. Um, and to do that, I feel like I might need to pick uh, against the trend. But this week, I, I really couldn't do it. Uh, I, I'm picking the Chargers, and which, I mean, who's to say what is the trend when the Chargers meet yeah. the, with the Bears, uh, you know, Monday night? <laughs> there is no trend. Yeah, yeah, Regular knowledge this, at this point is yeah, out the window. In, it's in not this kind of game. But um, I like Phillip uh, Rivers more. And, um, more than yeah. who? <laughs> well, more than, more than anyone else that <laughs> the Bears yeah. could throw out there. Right, there really. you go. So, uh, Chargers for me. Uh, the Bears have Jay Cutler, and until that changes, I will never pick them in a game. So... Pretty much I'm going to go with that. I mean, I, and I like the Chargers, too. I'm surprised that their record is as bad as it is this year, having Phillip Rivers and stuff, but it's not so bad that they can't beat the Bears. Yeah. Well, not that I think that they really have a shot, but you can pick them. Um, but I would be murdered by a large number of people if I picked the Bears just because I am friends with so many Packers fans. So uh, I'm going to yeah. go Chargers first. You know. and, uh, <laughs> sports bar rumor has it you were wearing a Packers jersey as recently uh, as yesterday. I was. Uh, an I was. unnamed source? Yeah. We have an unnamed, an unnamed source. Yes. That, oh, okay. That has <laughs> photographic evidence that says that this was I wore it well. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So obviously I'm picking the Bears because they don't have Forte and they have Jay Cutler and because every time you have a team that shouldn't win a game on Monday night, they seem to find a way to win. As my <laughs> six, like I was going to say, I can't, I can't argue that. That's yeah, the one thing I can't argue. The Bears are the team. We'll see how that all plays out. As always, uh, you are welcome to give us your commentary, and we promise we might read it. Send us an email at watchapptv.com. Until next time, I'm David Jackson. Thanks for tuning into the Sports Bar.